Now, my guest this morning is Dr. Stephen Post. And I've never had a guest who's more intelligent, more respected in the academic world. He is an author. He is an ordained theologian. He is, uh, uh, I'm holding it up right here, one of the most creative writers I've ever had the privilege to read. This book is entitled, Why Good Things Happen to Good People. Well, that's a tremendously provocative, insightful, and inspiring title. And uh, boy, Dr. Francis Collins endorses it. Sister Helen Prejean, Dr. Martin Seligman, the head of the positive psychology movement in the world today. And I'm on the back cover. I say about it in my entire lifetime, I have never read a book that presents the benefits of giving for the giver as well as this one does and using such powerful science in the process. Welcome, Dr. Stephen Post. Thank you, thank you. Well, you're one of the newest friends and one of the most valued and intelligent and insightful psychologists of our time and that you've come into my life is a gift of God. I want to thank you for that. That you, with your prestige, has written over 150 articles published in peer journals. His studies have been in Oxford, in England, and in America. And he heads an institute uh, founded by uh, Dr. John Templeton, I believe. Indeed, yes, Dr. Templeton. But every time I see you, you look like you're 38 years old, and you are past 50, I believe you told me. And my kids tell me I'm a little immature. <laughs> oh, wonder, wonderful. <laughs> but you've been an inspiration to me over the years as a positive Christian theologian and pastor. It's been very important for me to follow your work and your emphasis for many decades. Well, that kind of humbles me because I don't see myself as a scholar, but anyway, let's get to the point. What This book, Why Good Things Happen to Good People, right. tell me about it. Well, this is a book that takes a look scientifically through 50 different studies across the United States at the benefits of being a giver, at the benefits of being a generous person. One of your old friends, the Christian psychiatrist Carl Menninger said, love cures both those who give it as well as those who receive it. And it turns out that in all of these studies, as you look at people's lives over the course of their lifetimes from youth or even in dealing with any particular difficult illness, including alcoholism, those who are generous, who are helping others, tend to be healthier, they tend to be happier, and odds are they'll live a little longer too. So when Jesus said in Acts 20, "'Tis better to give than to receive," we can now say, aha, and science says it's so. Wow. Now this just isn't an author talking and writing. He is a scientific scholar. Tell me, you live and work among the scientists. Um, you know them. You met Dr. Dawkins, I know. Yes. Now, you, you know the world out there. Tell me, how do you maintain such a strong faith in Jesus Christ and in God when you have to live and work in a world where that viewpoint is not necessarily respected? Well, I think it's really important to go into the world. It would be easy for me to be a seminary professor or to teach at a divinity school, and I would enjoy that. I've been tempted to do it over the course of my career on more than one occasion. But I've always felt that uh, the best use of my, my gifts, uh, and in a sense my mission in life, has been to work in the scientific environment. So for the last 20 years, I've been in the intense academic medical environment, uh, Case Western uh, Reserve University School of Medicine. And where, you, are the, you are in there? Yes, I am. I'm a professor there. Everybody studies 
disease, and human deficit. And that's really important. But just imagine, if we could take 5% of the scientific resources that go into the study of disease and study the most positive human aspects, forgiveness, an attitude of gratitude, compassion, agape love, spirituality and health. If we just take 5% of all the money that goes into the study of health and look at this most positive aspect yeah, of the yeah. human experience, we would actually do more to improve health than you could ever imagine because public health, I always say, isn't just about bugs, lead paint, and that kind of thing. It's also a lot about uh, how we live. It's about the love that we have in our hearts that protects us from negative emotions, from stress, from hostility. It's all about the things that are gifts of the spirit. And how in the world could negative thinking people, especially the ultimate negative thinker who I would say would be an atheist, uh, how would negative thinking people develop enthusiastic, joyous, happy, uh, healthy uh, personalities? Well, the book, Why Good Things Happen to Good People, isn't just about science. It tells great stories in every chapter. Every chapter is about an expression of love. Uh, there's a chapter on attentive listening that begins with a man named Dan Gottlieb, a psychologist who was in a terrible car accident in Philadelphia. He was in the hospital, paraplegic, thinking of suicide, and along came a night nurse. She approached him and she said, Dr. Gottlieb, I have a problem. I'm thinking about killing myself. Can I speak with you? And he said, sure. So she sat down and as he listened to her so attentively and as he helped her with her problems, he realized I can live my life as a paraplegic because I can help others in this way of love. And now he runs a big NPR radio show in Philadelphia called Voices in the Family. So every chapter has stories of people who themselves benefited from giving love in some special way. And then it gives how to and even a scale and so that you can assess your strengths in that particular area of giving. I would do anything I could do to get the American people to buy this book and put it on the bestseller list. There are some books on the bestseller list that are promoting atheism which doesn't generate enthusiastic, healthy, happy, wonderful, loving people. Quite the contrary. Negative thoughts produce negative results. And this is such a, to find such a scientist that you are, recognized with the scientific community, coming out with a positive book, why good things happen to good people. Well, it's inspired by Marty Seligman, yeah. the, as you said, the king of positive psychology, and by Dr. Robert Schuller, in my view, the, the genius of positive theology. I remember asking you for your definition of sin, and you said, sin is not having faith in your dreams. Oh, dude, that's good. That's <laughs> and, you know, that is good. Yeah. And this book, you know, it's about a dream, because since I was 16 years old up in a church-related high school in New Hampshire, I was studying agape love, and all my life I've been blessed by God in one way or another, whether it was in research uh, or uh, theology or psychology, to be able to stay with this theme and finally bring together agape with the best we have in the human sciences. It's fantastic. Well, go out and buy it, order it, read it, and be, pass it on. Thank you, thank you, Stephen, so much. And thank you, and for my, for my co-author, Jill Nymark, too, who's a journalist in New York, she's delighted. I'm sure she's going to be watching. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Dr. Post. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.